So someone wanted to know about treatment decision-making in NMO and MOG, which are neuromyelitisoptica and myelin oligodendrocytic glycoprotein. These are antibody-mediated forms for us of optic neuritis, but of course it can cause transverse myelitis and area postrema and brainstem and diencephalopathic syndromes in NMO and can look like ADM or MOG. You can go watch those videos. But in terms of treatment, there's two things we need to know. What is the acute treatment and what is the chronic maintenance treatment? In the acute setting, everybody gets IV steroids. And if in the optic neuritis treatment trial, you know that optic neuritis from idiopathic or multiple sclerosis, whether you gave IV steroids, oral steroids, or nothing, everybody got better. But that's not the case in NMO and MOG. In NMO and MOG, you have to treat with IV steroids. And we'd be like to get the patient treated within the first four days to the first seven days of onset because once you wait too long, time is brain and brain is optic nerve and time is vision. So it has been our practice to admit to the hospital all optic neuritis until we can sort through whether it's the good news, idiopathic, or the medium bad news, MS, or the bad news, MOG, or the super ugly thing, NMO. And because you can't tell that at time zero with optic neuritis, probably should admit to the hospital. If you think it's MOG or NMO, you might go to Plex or IVIG if we're not getting better by day three to five in the acute setting. And that's because unlike demyelinating optic neuritis from multiple sclerosis, if you don't treat this, they're going to be blind. So each single attack could lead to permanent disability. So we don't want to fool around with that in the acute setting. In the chronic phase for MOG, you've got the traditional treatments, immunosuppression agents, mycophenolate, azathioprine, uh, rituximab, the B-cell depleting strategy, or IVIG. And so it depends whether you're worried about recurrence and side effect profiles, whether you're going to go to immunosuppressive therapy versus IVIG in MOG. But in NMO, which as you know is a different antibody, the aquaporin 4 channel antibody, you have to go to an immunosuppressive strategy. There are currently three approved drugs. Rituximab is not one of them because rituximab is not approved for NMO. The three approved drugs have different targets, satralizumab, eculizumab, and inebolizumab. Inebolizumab, CD19 blocker, satralizumab, interleukin-6 blocker, and eculizumab, complement C5. And of course, there's different reasons that you would choose di different drugs, cost, convenience, infusion time, side effect profile, and effects on acquired uh, immunity. And that's got to be an individualized basis. But luckily, we now have three approved monoclonal antibodies, and you're just going to have to work with your neurologist if you're an ophthalmologist or work with your neuro immunologist to determine whether first line is going to be eculizumab, second line satralizumab, or whether you're going to go to inebolizumab, and whether they've had prior rituximab therapy also comes into the decision making.